grateful to me. So I want us to just continue to appreciate God for his faithfulness, appreciate God for his blessings. The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. It's a good thing to bless his holy name, to proclaim his love in the morning and his faithfulness at night. It is a good thing. It is a good thing. Say, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Why not just begin to appreciate him? Thank him for another moment in, your, in his presence. There is nothing as good as being in his presence. There is nothing as awesome as enjoying him fully. So it's a good thing anytime we come into his presence, let's just bless his holy name. Let's worship him. Let's extol his name. Bible says extol him that he reigns above the heavens by his name, Jah, by his name, Jehovah, by his name, Jehovah, the Yahweh, the almighty God. Let's lift up his name for this wonderful privilege. It is a privilege anytime, anytime, any moment to be in the presence of God. Ah, we bless your holy name. We lift your name high. We extol you. We magnify your name. Oh, great and great and mighty God, we extol you. Thou who was from the beginning, thou who remains on high, thou who will be be forever, Lord. We bless your name. We worship you. We extol your name. You are sweet. You are so good. You are so excellent. We magnify your name. We worship you forever. We extol your name, O Lord, great and mighty God, ruler forever, ruler forever. We extol you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. You are wonderful. You are glorious, so Lord. You are excellent. You are special. We lift your name high. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Mighty God, awesome God, we lift your name high. We exalt, we extol you, Lord. Ah, you are so good, the Lord. You've done so much for us. <laughs> we cannot tell it all. We say now, If we are 10,000 tons, it still won't be enough for oh, Narekelemo. Chuku Nagwam Narele. When you heal, you heal completely. Narekelemo. Daddy Lord Chuku Marobimo. He sing the candle, always sing the rekelemo. Nara nara o, nara nara he, narekele, narekelemo. Nara ekelemo, nara nara he, nara ekele, nara ekelemo. Just exalt his name, just extol his name. Receive all the glory, receive all the praise. Have you come here heavy? <laughs> Why not just say, Lord, I thank you, because anyhow it is, Lord, you still remain on the throne. You have not left your position. You remain God, God all by yourself. No man can topple you down. You are the almighty God, the all-powerful. <laughs> oh, why not just revel in his presence? Why not revel in his presence? <laughs> Why not just worship him? Why worship? Why not just worship him? People will ask, oh, why am I worshiping him? Yes, because he's on the throne and he's still in control. No matter what it is, even though the fig tree doesn't blossom, even though there may be nothing in the stalls, even though you are in a lockdown, 
your heart is not locked down. God is not locked down. God is on the throne. Why not just extol his name, lift up his name and worship him. Tell him, Lord, I recognize you. I acknowledge your faithfulness upon my life, upon my family. I recognize that you have been so good to me. I recognize every little benefit you have given to me. That in nothing is small. Why not just tell him those sweet things? Why not just pump yourself up in the spirit? Why not just acknowledge the greatness of God? Worship is worship. It means telling the worth of God. How big is your God to you? How excellent is it to you? Just magnify his name. Bible says we should come into his presence with singing, into his courts with praise. He said, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Oh, why not just bless him, bless him, bless him? Because God is about to do wonderful things in your life, in my life. Daddy, we give you all the praise. We give you all the worship. Thank you for everything, Lord. Oh, Malika Sandalabosha. Take all the glory, Lord. Take all the honor, Lord. Take all the adoration. Yes, we acknowledge you, Lord. We crown you as the king of our midst, Lord. King in our lives, Lord. King in every situation, Lord. We are not bothered about the challenges around us, Lord. We are not moved by what we see. We are not moved by what we hear. What we are moved by is because we know you. We know you. We know you. We know you are God from the beginning. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Malika Satayaba. I want you to present yourselves before God right now and say, Father, I have come before your presence. Daddy, help me to worship you the way you want me to. Help me to connect with you just the way you want me to. Daddy, cause me to have a touch from your presence. Cause me to have a move from your presence that is second to none. Daddy, I have come before your presence. Bible says we have not come before anything. So we have come before the presence of God, the heavenly Jerusalem. We've come to Zion, the city of the living God. You are before the presence of God, brethren. You are before the presence of God. So why not just say, Father, I've come before your presence. Daddy, transform me today. Touch my life. Change my life, Lord. Cause me to encounter you today in a unique way. Daddy, minister to my life today. Cause me to, oh Lord, offer to you excellent worship, a worship that is worthy of who you are, Lord. And Lord God, cost me, oh Lord, to live here with an excellent blessing, a blessing that is worth more than what I can imagine. <laughs> Bible says unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you can ever ask or imagine. So why not just say, Lord, I come before your presence. Do more than what I can imagine today. Begin to ask God to make use of every instrument, every instrument that God will wear them as a garment. God will use them so mightily. God is going to orchestrate his own agenda that is beyond their own personal vendetta or agenda, that God will use them beyond their own abilities, that God will use them to bless you today. God will use them to bless us and many who will be listening today. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to pray for those who have not connected yet or those who feel down, who are unable to connect. Let's ask God to make the means available, to make the drive available, that they will partner with us. They will connect with him, with us, and in his presence so that their lives will be fully transformed. I don't know if you came here with a problem today. Ask the Lord, Father, I come before you today. Holy Spirit, deal with my issues. Deal with my problem tonight. In this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus, and I want you to ask the Lord, Holy Spirit, come and take over. Come and take over. Come and take over. Come and take over. We cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it by our own selves. Therefore, Holy Spirit, we need you. We need your presence. We need your power. We need your authority. We need your greatness. We need your spirit. We need your inspiration. Holy Spirit, come in a mighty way. Come in your fullness. Come, oh Lord, and envelop the atmosphere through this Zoom network, oh Lord, through the Facebook network, through the YouTube network. Holy Spirit, move like never before. Make use of every vessel for your own glory and visit us, oh Lord, uniquely today. Let our hearts 
hearts be stirred up. Let our spirits be stirred up. Let Jesus be glorified. Thank you for answers to prayers. For this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we pray and we thank you for blessing us today. Thank you because you have started with us and you will still do great and mighty things. Lord, I commit to Lord the time, O Lord, where we will spend, O Lord, listening to your word, sharing in your table, O Lord, from your table. I pray, Lord, that you will make use of your servant, O Lord, to speak your word, O Lord, with precision, O Lord, and accuracy. Touch that, O Lord, your children will be, will be moved, O Lord, from one level, O Lord, to a greater level. Their lives shall be transformed, the Lord. Holy Spirit, take control. Continue with us, the Lord. Thank you for answered prayers. For this we pray in Jesus' most excellent name. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the presence of God, and um, we will be um, looking into a portion of uh, a topic today. Last week, we looked at uh, one of those things, the victory, we are more than conquerors, the victory we have in Christ. And we were, it was so clear that what we have as an asset now is more than what we can imagine. We have victory in Jesus Christ, and we need to appropriate that victory at all times and never give in to what the devil says. Today, I've been given a topic titled Watchfulness watchfulness, watchfulness. You will look around and find out that this message, this teaching is a timely teaching. Why? Because so many things are happening. The whole world is in turmoil. Things are going upside down. Things are going a wire. And it's only those who are watchful that will know what the signs of the times are. It's only those who are watchful that will know what they need to do per time. And that is why this topic is so, so relevant today. And my prayer for you today is that God will speak through his servant to bless you. God will minister life to you and your life will be transformed. You are going to experience what it needs and you are going, your life will be transformed. You will experience what it needs to be watchful in the mighty name of Jesus. So we ask ourselves what, what is worship? Or what is watchfulness? Watchfulness. It is one statement we always talk about. In a country like this, uh, we probably are not too conscious of it, but there are certain third world countries where you see a lot of security challenges. And because of these security challenges, people tend to be watchful at all times. You find out, I was uh, discussing this with um, my wife some time back, I was saying, one of the things that Israel has helped Israel is watchfulness. They are always prepared. They are always prepared. Everybody, once they reach the age of accountability, once they reach the, the, age, the age of 18, they are meant to, to, to get enlist in the army. They are meant to enlist. So because they are in the midst of foes, all over, all around them, they are in the midst of enemies. They are forced to be watchful. They are forced to be alert. If not, they will be totally eliminated from the face of the earth. So that is the way also the Christian is. We are in the midst of foes. We are in the midst of enemies. If you remember the hymn that says, Christians seek not yet repose. He said, because you are in the midst of foes. You are in the midst of enemies. The reality is that we are in the midst of enemies. If you don't know that, we are going to go through the scriptures and we're going to see why we are in the midst of enemies and why we should be watchful. I pray God is going to help us and grant us deep understanding and insight in the name of Jesus. What does it mean to be watchful? What it means to be watchful is to be on guard at all times, to be on guard at all times, in all situations, always been on guard. If you remember, for those who were part of the Boy Scout, there was, their, their motto was what? Ready. Ready. That signifies a sense of urgency. It signifies a sense of alertness. When you see those who work in the fire service, typically they are used always in a state of readiness. Why? Because situations might come that would call for the attention 
urgently. So they are always prepared. He said what? He said, oh, the Boy Scouts motto is be prepared. And uh, the, the, uh, a, a particular body I was part of while growing up in Assemblies of God Church, it's what? The, 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 the Royal Rangers, they say what? Their motto was ready, ready for anything. So basically all they are saying is the same thing. We should be watchful. We should be ready. We should be prepared for anything. And we must be ready at all times. Even when it comes to sharing the faith, we must be ready. We must be watchful. Because there are opportunities that sometimes passes us by because we are not watchful. We are not watchful. So there is a need for us to be alert at all times. God will help us in Jesus' name. Worship can also be seen as the process of paying close and continuous attention to something. The process of paying close, close. So worship is not just staying aloof. It is not just looking. It's not just staring. It is focusing. It is focusing. It is, it is directed. It is paying close attention to something and maintaining that attention continuously, continuously. For those who are in the security job or business, you find out that watchfulness is a key word in what they do because anything can happen at any time. Anything can happen at any time. So they have to be at, at their alert at all times. So watchfulness is what it is. And so when we look at the root word of watchfulness, it's, it's similar. It's gotten from the root word great. Gregorio, Gregorio, and uh, that's what some people actually bear as names. What it means is to always to be awake at all times, to be awake, to be alert. That is to be vigilant, to be watchful, praise the Lord, to always be awake because so many things can happen when people sleep. Bible says when men slept, the enemy came. May we not sleep at the right time in Jesus' name. May we not sleep at the wrong time. <laughs> because there, for us as human beings, we need to sleep. But physically speaking, sleeping at the wrong time could be disastrous. Amen. Let me use that example. You are going, you, you are at work and you are sleeping at your place of work. <laughs> you know that you are joking with that job. That job might soon be a thing of the past. So that is why there is a need for us to be watchful at all times. God will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, it's also seen as a state of being continuously alert at all times. You see, all these things, they talk about some things. It talks about consistency. It talks about continuity. It talks about time at all times. It talks about a process or a state. So that is what watchfulness is. At all times, God expects us to be watchful. Praise the Lord. I, I want to just quickly say that watchfulness could also involve sleepless nights. <laughs> Paul said, I have gone through a lot of things. Watchful. I have in various watches. I have I've gone through them. Sleepless night. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 5, and in verse, chapter 11, verse 27, there were emphasis Paul made there about being on the alert. And this tells you that the Christian race is not a sleepy race. It is not a race where you just sit down and feel, oh, I feel cool. I feel okay. No, 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 no. We are in the midst of enemies. And that is why we must always be alert in the spirit. May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, before I ask one or two questions, I just want to move to something else. Okay, maybe this is a good time for me to ask that question. Is, is watchfulness being suspicious? Is watchfulness synonymous with suspicion? I will ask um, Pastor Dotum. Is watchfulness and suspicion the same? Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, watchfulness and suspicion are two different things. Uh, if we depend, it's not even depend. For somebody like me, um, watchfulness is more of uh, being ready, like you said, sir. It's more of being ready 
for any situation that is uh, about to come your way, mm. it's more of being prepared mm. for any situation that is about to happen. Uh, if you will agree that I go spiritual about it a little bit, yeah, is that you are prayerful 24 7, is that you are watchful, is that you are intentional, is that whatever happens, you have already got yourself to four. You have a dream. You don't think that dream is just a mere imagination or uh, assumption or something you have been thinking about. You wake up, you pray about it. If it is two minutes, that is watchfulness. Because mm. the day that the evil will come, they don't come. They are like terrorists. They have information mm. at hand before, so mm. they don't don't come without without you know like an emergency. They plan their stuff. If somebody is planning for you, you need to plan. Suspicion mm. is more of um, secular life, secular mm. uh, things that, okay, uh, say for example, if you, whoever is on the mountain on, uh, on uh, Saturday morning, you can tell suspicion there that you have been working with a friend, that you have been with someone for some time, and this person began to change bit by bit by bit. You, you need to, you know, look into your environment every time mm. to be very sure if the same person you know today is the same person tomorrow. Mm. And when they, are, when they begin to do something, not to take our time, when people begin to change, then mm. they become suspicious. But watchfulness, you don't need anybody to change around you. You don't need mm. to see anybody's character. You are on guard 24-7. Suspicion is more of somebody you have, you know, or something that has been changing from one particular situation to another. Uh, I don't know if that is self-explanatory, sir. Okay, Thank praise the much. Lord. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, Sister Noni, yes, uh, do you agree with that? Praise the Lord. Okay. If Sister Nanya is not in, yes, I would want to find out. Mama She's Grace. in, sir. We just can't hear her. She's in. Okay. <laughs> when I said I do agree, but I just want to put another spin to that. Okay. When there's a suspicion, then watchfulness becomes a duty, like an action mm. so, contingent to the suspicion. Mm. Even in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, we're told to watch and pray. Mm. Say, so watch and pray. Why? He said, because we, we do not, so that we do not fall into temptation. Mm. So it's a requirement that we watch and pray, not because there's a suspicion, but because he says in that same Matthew 26, the body is weak. Mm. Body is weak. So being watchful being uh, watchful at, in that uh, situation is like being vigilant. Being okay, vigilant. Praise the that's Lord. beautiful. Thank you so much, Ma. Yeah, so we see that um, watchfulness and suspicion, they are quite, they have some level of relationship, but they are different. Some people are just simply suspicious. Anything that comes to them, they, they suspect everybody. It is about not trusting people. But there are certain instances, certain actions of people may make you to feel suspicious. But suspicion for a Christian shouldn't be a consistent thing. It means you wouldn't be able to work with anybody. <laughs> it means that anything anybody says, you begin to begin to take, make, read meanings unnecessarily into it. So suspicion is an extreme level of, um, it could also be related to some form of um, uh, psychological uh, feelings, but watchfulness is a spirit, completely spiritual thing. Like both uh, Sister Noni and uh, Pastor Dia said, it's a completely spiritual thing. It tells you at all times, you should always be on the alert. Things are flying across every time. When you are sleeping, you know, I was meditating on this. I said, come. I said, we say 12 midnight is when we should pray. What if we are here, six o'clock, 
12 midnight in Nigeria, in Nigeria is uh, 6 p.m. a year. <laughs> and people, uh, and we expect, based on many of our, our, our views, that they fly around 12 midnight. So that means you are at risk 6 p.m. So that means you should be praying <laughs> at that 6 p.m. What am I trying to bring out there? Watchfulness is a continuous state of alertness. It is not tied to just a particular time. Yes, we all have times where we meet with God, but it should be a state of always being alert. Number one is in the place of prayer. We should be alert. Why? Because the enemy strikes at any time. The enemy can strike at any time. That's why we need to be very careful. May God help us in Jesus' name. So I will be building on that as we move on. So we find out in Ephesians chapter 6, 17 to 18, Bible tells us that we should, before then it says uh, that we've wrestled not against flesh and blood against principalities. It moves on and talks about putting on the whole armor of God. And if you look at that place, if you read verse 17 to 18, which I will quickly read, Ephesians chapter 6, 17 to 18. So that we don't just eventually, yes, okay, I read, I, I'm, I, I will even read 18, especially. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. If you had read from the previous verses, it talked about the whole armor of God. Many a times we emphasize only on those five armors. The element of sexual, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the belt of truth, the foot shot with the preparation for the gospel of peace. But do you know that that is not the end of the hammer? Paul went for that. So that means that even though you have these things, there is a need. Another armor you need is prayer. Because you can put on the most sophisticated weaponry. If you are not alert, you are going to be destroyed with that weaponry. Prayer is key there. And it also emphasizes watchfulness. Being careful so that you don't eventually wear all this and lose it and miss it. May God help us not to miss it because of our carelessness in Jesus' name. So we ask ourselves, why do we need to be watchful? We need to be watchful because of the adversary. First Peter chapter five verse eight tells us, it says we should be sober. We should be vigilant. I love the way Amplified Version puts it. It says we should be sober. We should be well balanced and self-disciplined. We should be alert and cautious at all times. So one of those things is, means that we should be careful with everything we do. We should be deliberate in everything we do. Why? Because our enemy, the adversary, the devil is walking around. He's walking around like a roaring lion, a fiercely hungry lion looking for whom to devour. The devil at all times is seeking for our downfall. And that's why we need to be, to be, to be watchful. Like I gave you an example, Israel is watchful. Why? Because they are in the midst of enemies. Because we are in the midst of enemies, there is a need for us to be spiritually alert at all times. Praise the Lord. Because if not, we are going to be consumed. God will help us. We will never be consumed in the name of Jesus. So another reason is because of the imminent coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 to 8 emphasizes so many things regarding that. It talks about the day it will come. It started, Paul said, he said, of time and seasons, I have no need to write you because the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. When a thief is coming, it does not tell you when he will be coming. It just comes like that. Although we know at some instances, we have sometimes some thieves will give you a notice letter <laughs> and say, oh, we are coming at so, so, so time. But most often than not, the enemy, the, the thief comes 
unannounced. It is that surprise element that jolts people, that makes people feel surprised. When we even talk about thieves, okay, what if we talk about the pickpockets? They don't announce it. They just pick, steal those things and run away. And that's how the day of the Lord is likened to. His coming is going to be unannounced. That is why he wants us to be aware of this and always be watchful. Because at any time, be watchful for the signs. Typically, Jesus Christ had told us, he said, there are signs. If you go through Matthew 24, go through it to the end. It talks about many of these signs. Let's look at it. He said, there shall be wars, there shall be rumors of wars. I don't know what is happening today. Are you watchful? Are you paying attention to these details? Watchfulness is paying attention to details. Are you looking at these things? Bible says false prophet will arise. It says, the first thing it will say, it says, take it that nobody deceives you. Deception. Everywhere you see deception. People deceiving you. Brothers fighting each other. War everywhere. We just, uh, land of the ceasefire, just few, yesterday or so, between Israel and uh, the Palestine, these are wars. There are rumors of war, look at it, with China, US with China, US with Russia, all these things are meant to help, to let us know that Jesus Christ coming is imminent and we need to be watchful, praise the Lord. May God help us that we will not be found wanting when he comes in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15 says, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. But it says what? We should watch, keep watch. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 4, verse 7 tells us, it says, the end of the things are near. He said, let us be sober and watch unto prayer. Prayer is needed in the process of being watchful. Another reason why we need to be watchful is because of our life and relationship with God. There is nothing as significant as your own life. You cannot keep on pursuing other things and lose your soul. Bible says of what profit is it? In Romans chapter, in Revelation chapter three, two to three, I will just quickly refer to that briefly. Revelation chapter 3. It was to the angel of the angel of the church wrote to the spoke to the church in Sardis. And he says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, the things that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect. God was talking about, he said, repent. Because God is going to come as a thief. What is your work with God like? Do you take things for granted? Are you like the church in Sardis? That is taking things for granted. God is saying, be watchful, repent. Those things that are ready to die, those, those, those spiritual giftings, those, those disciplines, spiritual disciplines. He says, be watchful and strengthen them again. May God help us in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 says what? He said we should watch. Before he said, he said, watch ye. There is a need for us to be on the alert at all times. <laughs> in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 to 5, it says we should watch. He was talking to Timothy. He said, watch you. Do the work of an evangelist. So that tells you the relationship between watchfulness and Preaching the gospel, we need to be sensitive to opportunities. Watchfulness is like the watchman in Ezekiel. It says when you see somebody going and going to his own destruction, reach out and caution that person. God will help us that we should get back to the first law. We should move and make his heartbeat move further in Jesus' name. We need to be watchful because of temptations. Our sister shared that scripture with us in Matthew. And in Mark also, it's also something like that. Mark chapter 14, verse 38. 
He says we should watch and pray. Those two things need to go together. Watch and pray. If you look at the scripture, you see them many a times going together. Why? Because the spirit is ready to do the work, but the flesh is weak. The flesh doesn't want to pray. The flesh doesn't want to read the word of God. The flesh doesn't want to meditate on the word of God. The flesh doesn't want to make changes so that they can, you can allow more of God. So you see, when you look at so many things, you find out that there is a need for us to be alert. There is a need for us to awake to our responsibilities. I no wonder Paul was saying to the Ephesians church, he said, awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead. Christ will give thee light. So when we say watchfulness, it's also talking about being awake. If you are sleeping, be awake. So what are some of those things we should watch out for? The signs which we have said before. We should be watchful of false prophets. Acts chapter 20, 28 to 31. When Paul was living, he advised them. He said, false prophet will come. Oh. And it is emphasized that in so many scriptures, portions of the scripture, watch out for false teachings. It is going on everywhere today. Always make sure you gauge spiritual things with spiritual. Search the word of God. If not, you are going to be swallowed in the midst of it. So many barbaric practices that are brought from the altar. No, 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 no. You need to be watchful so that you know where you feed from. But you, if you don't feed from the table of God directly, I tell you, you will get chaff from outside. First of all, deepen, work on your relationship with God and God will help us in Jesus' name. So we should watch out for temptations. That is invitation to commit sin. You are only as strong as your weakest link. That weakness, watch out for it, identify it, and begin to address it in prayers and by deliberate actions. Today, some of the people you see that fell from grace, it was because they were not watchful about that weakness in their life. They allowed it to grow in them, and it destroyed them. A, a, a songwriter, Niya Dedo Queen Yoruba, he said, he talked about a man who carried a lion and was playing with it. He took it home. They warned him, do not, do not, do not. He did not listen to them. He kept on feeding the, the animal until the animal became so big and eventually caused his own death, consumed the hunter. May God help us that we will not be consumed by those weaknesses in our life, we must address them. We should be watchful. When we see those signs, let us get back to God and ask God for grace. God will help us because what well, the spirit is weak, but there's rather the flesh is weak, but the spirit is strong, is willing. Bible says, if we put to death our bodies by the spirit, we can put it to death. God will help us in Jesus name. We should watch out for that. How should we watch? We should watch with perseverance. Do not stop. Keep on doing it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says we should persevere as we watch. Praise the Lord. We should watch with prayers. We should keep on praying at all times, in all situations. At all situations. And we should keep on praying for all saints. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. You can also see more in Luke chapter 21, 36. Watch with prayers. So watch with thanksgiving also. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. He says we should be thankful and watchful at the same time. Praise the Lord. Unfortunately, many of us, because of thanklessness, because of ungratefulness, we have fallen into various traps. Bible says that is one of the signs of the end time. Say so people shall be unthankful. God will help us in Jesus. And let us watch with focus. Avoid distractions. There are so many things that want to distract us so from the from God's assignment from our life for our life. Let us be careful. Let us avoid those distractions. Bible tells us in First Kings chapter twenty verse thirty nine, the story of that um, the prophets, that great prophet that Pastor B mentioned on Friday, when he was speaking to the king. He gave the king a parable. He said there was a life told to the king. and said, keep this life. Nothing must happen to it. But he says, when we were busy, I was busy here and there. You, there is a business of God. Be careful that where you poke, you, you poke your nose into. Be careful. Do you, it's not everything you can do. Carefully allow God to lead you in the direction you should. And God is going to help us in Jesus' name. In conclusion, there is a blessing in watchfulness. So many blessings are there. But I want to just quickly read Luke chapter 12. 
from 35 to 37, but I'm going to emphasize 37. It says, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, he shall guard himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Blessed is that servant who his master will find him watching. God is watching for us. He's watching out for us and he wants us. He wants to find us watching at all times. And what did he say? The benefit, he says, the master will serve. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There is a coming. When the Bible tells us that we, there's going to be a feast by the time we are raptured. We are going to be a feast. God will serve us. There is a benefit. And even beyond getting there, and many times in our lives, God serves us. When he sees us doing the right thing, he blesses us. That is God's service to us. But the biggest one is when we get to heaven. Let us get prepared. Let us not lose focus. God will help us in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 13, he talks about, he says, Be, take heed, watch, and pray. Because God does not want, the master does not want to find us sleeping. And what did he say? In verse 37, this is what I say unto you, watch. I want you to bow your heads and ask the Lord. Jesus emphasized watchfulness. Emphasize what you ask the Lord, Father, help me to be watchful at all times. Help me to be sensitive, O oh Lord. Do not allow me give in to the antics of the devil. Do not allow me to get loaded so much with suspicion that I, um, I, I lose my watchfulness. Help me to be in tune with you at all times. Father, we bless you for this time in your presence. Continue with us. Deal with us, O oh Lord, in those areas of weaknesses in our lives. Help us to be watchful at all times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.